I am so tired of people blowing themselves up. In my life, I have spent 2,160 days in comfort zones, and countries just can't keep the peace. Now, you might ask yourself, why would anyone do that? And I can assure you, my mom has been asking that question for years. The thing is, I've always had this strong faith that connection can do magic, and that communication has the power to change worlds. But in order for that to happen, a world needs to be a safe place. I was blessed from the moment that I was born. I arrived on top of the planet in one of the safest countries in the world. And one of my earliest childhood memories is my mom writing shopping lists on pieces of paper. I remember looking at those signs the same way I still probably look at hieroglyphs today. I had no idea what those things meant, but they looked like a secret code. And then I remember when I cracked the secret code and I started to read. I fell in love with books where people I had never met could tell me their stories across space and time. And I loved learning about faraway cultures and strange lands. I would even picture myself in different lives, like a fierce Indian woman on horseback fighting for my people, or a dancing Hawaiiana, or an explorer of unknown worlds. I think that is when the traveler was born. The first time I did travel, I was 10. I went with my family to Spain. It was my first time flying, and I knew nothing about planes. Still don't. But when we were descending, piling up by the window to look outside, the engine suddenly seemed to shut down. And I thought, this is it. And I declared to the whole cabin, we are going down. We did not. And um, a few hours later, I was safe on the ground, busy learning Spanish with my pocket parlor to be able to buy the ice cream that I wanted and matches for my dad, who was smoking something called fairy tale mixture at the time. This was the 70s. I explored this country so different from my own. The food was different, the air smelled different, and people acted differently from what I was used to. But I made friends. At the age of 10, I was meeting people with a natural traveler's mindset. And I think we all do that when we're children. And then, little by little, bias settles in us. And it happens so slowly that we don't even notice. 20 years later, I'm traveling with the army. I'm a young officer deployed to Kosovo, Europe, a tiny country in trouble. It is a hot summer day, and I'm on the shooting range in Macedonia, responsible for a big exercise. By now, I have learned that things are complicated, but I'm still an optimist, and I strongly believe that serving in the army and helping maintain security in a tiny country in trouble is a way to contribute to dialogue and peace. On that day, our ammunition started a fire far out into the range, and um, I'm worried. It's my responsibility. By nightfall, we're safe, but there is a raging fire on three hillsides around the space that we are gathered. It does not look good. In the dark, the Macedonian commander of the shooting range arrives in a rusty old white Lada car, and he's not happy. Despite his non-existent English, I understand that he wants us to stay and help. And he said something about that Macedonian prisons are not very nice. So we stay the night. And the next morning, I have to send the soldiers home to do their job. But I decide to stay back myself until the fire is sorted. I have to admit, though, I'm feeling like a really tiny human when everyone is leaving. After a while, the, command, uh, the Macedonian commander returns, and I feel my heart go, but I explain to him why the soldiers had to leave. And he motions to me that he wants me to follow him in his car. 
I am not sure that is such a great idea, but under the circumstances, I don't really know what else I can do, so I go. It turns out we're going to his military camp. And as we're driving through it, I notice that it's almost completely empty. And right there, in a fraction of a second, the consequences of that I'm a woman, alone, in a Macedonian military camp, suddenly dawns on me. I have heard so many stories from this part of the world about human rights abuse, rape, horrible things. And I feel myself getting cold as I realize that if I'm in trouble here, no one is coming to help me. When we stop, we're outside a huge white warehouse-like building. And as I get out of the car, I feel myself prepare for whatever might come. A door opens in the warehouse, and the first thing I see inside is a man dressed in white. And right beside him, a table set for two, with plates and glasses and cutlery. The man in white, a chef, explains to me that the commander wants to commend me for my courage. And he has also noticed that I haven't eaten since yesterday. So he wants to offer me a meal. I did not expect that. I was prepared for cruelty, not compassion. Another 20 years, and nine deployments later, I'm flying in Afghanistan for the 10th time, over the beautiful Hindu Kush mountains and the Kabul city plains, with dust and houses and rubble, I have worked here as a teacher, a liaison, a mentor, and a leader. I have learned to cooperate with bosses and colleagues, religious figures and politicians, thousands of us trying to provide security and enable communication to create peace. Over 15 years, I have met so many amazing human beings, but people just had not stopped blowing themselves up. And I was starting to wonder, although speaking is one of the first things human beings learn, why do we seem completely unable to communicate? My epiphany happened after another terrorist attack in Kabul on Christmas Eve 2018. People blowing themselves up had become normal to me, expected even. And my childhood goal of connection and core belief that communication has the power to change worlds were at stake. Something had to change. So I changed the only thing that I can control. I changed myself. I followed my childhood dream, and I went traveling. I had the most amazing journey in South America. I explored Cuba, Costa Rica, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. I walked the ancient Inca Trail, and I learned Spanish, which technically makes me able to communicate with 400 million more people than before. I even started to dance. I slowly morphed from being a soldier to becoming a traveler. And on that journey, I found out that to travel as me is very different than traveling as Major Jacobson. When you show up in the world in a personal way and not from behind a title, a religion, or a nationality, your filters withers away. Now, you might think that these stories that I have shared with you tonight are very far away from your everyday life. But you see, they are not. The big conflict is just the circumstance. The communication is always between people, between me and the commander. Your circumstance can be your family, but you need to connect with your spouse and your children. Or your circumstance can be your job, but you have to find a way to communicate with your colleague. A communication that is equally important, if not more, because this is where it starts, all over the world. How we first learn and then teach to listen and to relate to one another. 
So how we learn that and how we teach that can have infinite ripple effects. I also realized that the mindset that I need to learn in these new cultures is exactly the same mindset that I need to connect at home with the people that I know and love. The mindset of a traveler. Now, the good news is you don't need to travel the world to find a traveler's mindset. But you do need to recognize your bias, that your unique life so far has created a lens through which you interpret the world. When I became a traveler, I became aware of my biases in a big way because I was constantly confronted with them. And I found a way to conquer that, which is what I want to share with you today. So if you want to improve how you connect with the people in your life, I invite you to think like a traveler and to set your own truths aside for just a moment. And the next time you find yourself in a difficult situation, practice meeting that other person with a traveler's mindset by using the STAR approach, a simple method of four steps that is easy to remember. The S is for stop. The T is for think, the A is for assess, and the R is for request. Star. Stop yourself in your tracks and just give yourself a moment to think before you jump to conclusions or judge. Then imagine this other person as someone from a mysterious exotic tribe that you don't know, a culture that you have never met before. What might this situation look like to such a person? And then assess whether your intuitive reaction to whatever is going on might be colored by your bias. Question your perception for just a moment and check. Request. Ask. Communication has not taken place until the recipient of a message has understood that message in the exact same way as the sender intended. And that is where we so often get it wrong. Which is why the simple question, when you say X, Y, Z, what exactly do you mean, can make a world of difference. Because every person you meet has a full-blown, unique inner culture that you don't know, even your siblings. My sisters and I have had three different childhoods within the same family. And you have your own inner culture from where you interpret everything that is going on around you. An interpretation that could be correct, but it could be wrong. So if you stay curious and choose to use your inner traveler to conquer that bias, ask that question, you might find out that this weird little thing of Thinking of others as someone from a culture that you don't know can dramatically improve how you connect with everybody that you meet. And in the grand scheme of things, all across the world, just maybe in time, fewer people will feel like dramatic things like blowing themselves up is a solution to anything. So I hope to leave you tonight with a mental image of that star to remind you to explore the world and the people in it with the mindset of a traveler. And a short but magical quote by the wise writer George Bernard Shaw. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Thank you.